Hey guys, it's Anne. If you're looking for an active home worm farming community, you're in the right place. Today we're going to look in on my African Nightcrawlers and make a new batch of the African Nightcrawlers favorite bedding. It takes five ingredients and just a very little bit of time. So I'm going to get a little bit of a harvest, start making the batch of bedding. Then we are going to feed the African night crawlers up after we take a look at them and see what they've been doing. I've been using them for a bit of a garbage bin lately since they're on the same floor as the kitchen. All of my canning garbage has been going in there so they may not even need a feeding. All right, let's get started. What I have here is a 61 liter, I don't know what that is in gallons because that's all it tells me. Um, container of shredded cardboard and paper. You can tell that there's some paper in here, but it's mostly cardboard. Then our second ingredient is going to be coconut coir. And really the only function that this has is so that it can keep the paper from gluing itself together and uh, making the bedding kind of difficult for the worms to eat because it has stuck together with the glue that makes the cardboard. Then the next ingredient is going to be some eggshell. Grit for the worms so that they can digest things quickly. Some liquid kelp. I use this on just about everything from bonsais to the garden to orchids uh, to help make the worm bedding. It's a good nitrogen source to get the microbes in here getting this bedding started so the African night crawlers can make castings faster for me. And the last ingredient is worm castings. So we're gonna do a little bit of a harvest of the African Nightcrawler bin. I only use the castings that come from the worm bin that I'm making the bedding for because there are probably going to be cocoons in here. And if the cocoons hatch into worms, I want them to be the same kind of worms that are in my bin. So when I'm doing this for blue, which is a mixed species bin, I don't worry about it at all. But for this one, we need to do a little bit of a harvest first so I can get some castings. Okay, let's get a little bit of castings. Even though we harvested last time, I need a little bit more for the uh, bedding. So I don't normally harvest more than once every three or four months, but uh, I need to, <laughs> I should do it more often than that. So this will give us a little bit more room in the bin to add more food and more bedding, which is one of the things that the African nightcrawlers are known for being very good at, which is processing bedding very, very quickly. Okay, now let's get the bedding put together. Then once we get the castings, we're just going to do a bit of a shake shake here so that I am not putting, you know, like pumpkin seeds and avocado shell um, in here. It doesn't really matter, quite honestly. You don't have to do this, but this is me um, being me. So that's probably, I don't know, about a coffee cup worth of castings that we're gonna put in here. And it really doesn't matter because the point of this bedding is for it to age for a couple of weeks. So whatever microbes and fungi are in here are gonna have a chance to expand and grow with the nutrients we're gonna give them. So first things first, we're going to give them some warm water. Put some of the kelp meal in the water just so that it has a chance to, you know, go over a larger area and I don't have any one particular concentration. The idea is to get the nitrogen source to all of the, all of the bedding that I'm making here. So then I'm going to take my coconut coir and you don't really have to use as much as I did. I just happened to get a good deal and a big brick of it. Uh, you only need a couple of handfuls because its only goal is to keep these paper particles away from each other. And then we are just going to mix it all up. I add my grit into my bedding because I am a dingbat and I will forget to add it with the food. 
So it's not actually mandatory that you put this in with the bedding. I just do it to make it easier on me. So then when all of this is completely moistened, it takes a little bit of uh, time for the cardboard to suck up all the water. And I might end up needing to add a little bit more water for this volume of uh, shredded cardboard. But basically that's what I do. We mix this all up together, put a lid on it and let it sit for a couple of weeks. And then by the time I feed this to the worms, then it will be pre-broken down and they can just dive right in and start making me some castings. Let's go take a look at the worms and see if they need another feeding. Okay, here we are back at the top of the bin. And as I said, I've been tossing things in here, which has led to there being a little bit of some worms on the top. So that's nice. We finally get to see some of the, the African night crawlers. So that's nice. Um, as had happened with the last time that I purchased uh, African night crawlers, they eventually start losing their size uh, because I don't intensively feed for the purpose of keeping them large. So unfortunately, even though I do like the breed, ugh, mold, even though I do like the breed for consuming all of my shredded paper and you know, Amazon boxes. Um, the attraction to having these big, giant, ginormous worms, uh, unfortunately doesn't, they don't stay huge and ginormous if you don't um, feed them in such a way that keeps them that way. So these are the um, Brussels sprout stems. So they are still a work in progress up here. Had a little, overload of my round zucchini I planted this year. Really like that a lot more than the regular zucchini. It, uh, the ratio of usable part to seed is, is better in my opinion than the long ones that get ginormous and uh, get the huge seeds that you can't really use for anything. So I like these round ones better. Um, they are just as prolific though, a word to the wise. So. Uh, you probably, depending on how much you love zucchini, you still only need like one plant. I wasn't sure since they're so small, the zucchini that is, I thought I should plant two plants. Nope, still just needed the one plant. It, what it made up for in the size of the zucchini itself, it uh, was also every bit as productive as a normal zucchini plant. So now that I've uh, harvested again, I'm knocking things down some, but I wanna get these stems buried really, really good because I know they can eat them. It just takes a while. So let's see if we can split. Yep, they're getting in there. I already have one worm in there. So I do just enjoy experimenting and seeing, you know, how tough a food can they actually eat? And uh, they never surprise, you know, they just, it's awesome how, you know, tough of an item that the worms and their bin critter friends of items they can eat. Uh, it may take them six months, but they even, uh, they can even get through this, which is apparently trying to grow again. Okay, well, I think they could use a little bit more of a feed, even though they still have a little bit of the tomato and onion. I'm gonna give them a little bit more of the zucchini because I had some that uh, got overripe. So they're gonna get that. Okay, so when we come in the next time, I wouldn't be surprised if we have a nice worm ball in one of these little uh, zucchini pockets. Uh, should see if uh, Patrick can come up with a uh, cool word for a zucchini house. So now let's get them some of the bedding that has been sitting around for about a month. So this is about a five gallon bucket worth and uh, some of it's dry, some of it's wet. I'll have to keep an eye on that. But at this point, I don't wanna add any water. I will come back and look in about a week. So if you enjoyed this video, 
please give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button, and if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. Alright guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.